Hey, we're here together. Uh, we're having a segment here called Ask the Pastor and Ask the Intern. And so I'm the pastor this week, Ken White. I serve as a lead pastor, and this is... Connor Fritz, and I'm the youth ministry intern. Which is awesome. So we have a series of questions we're just going to ask, real kind of short ones, just to see how a lead pastor thinks about it and how an intern thinks about it. And hopefully it'll help you to think about how you think about it. So here's the question this week. I'm just going to ask Connor, and he's going to ask me back the same question. Connor, how often should you pray, and what should you pray about? I mean, I think you should pray all the time. Like, me personally, I wear this little necklace every day, and then every single time the little, like, clasp falls down, I do a popcorn prayer when I turn it back around. So really just keeping me in the mindset of constant prayer, um, and then really just praying for almost everything, giving thanks to the Lord, and then, like, asking for guidance as I'm struggling in my college classes, as I'm just going throughout the day. Yeah. Really just keeps my mindset. So yes. is a popcorn prayer like uh, one where you're, you're eating popcorn as you're praying, or can I you mean, describe what that means? It could be. Like, a popcorn prayer is just really, like, could be short and simple. And I'm like, yo, just thank you for this day as I spin my necklace back around, really just giving it all to God and just keeping my mindset up. Yeah. Would you think of it as like caramel popcorn or like regular hot buttered popcorn? Dog, that's a really good question. I think of it as like the spray butter popcorn as the popcorn's falling into the bowl as you air pop your popcorn. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. All of a sudden I want to have popcorn. Maybe Next I should week. also want to pray. Anyway. What about you? Well, I like to pray in the morning pretty much every morning. And what I try to do is I, I take a couple of books that I just have guided prayers and so I'll read the scriptures and then I'll have these guided prayers because in the morning like I'm not awake and so I need to have something that helps me to pray things and then after I'm done praying I'll, I'll put things aside and I'll usually just uh, sit there and just kind of think and try to think about different things that I can pray about until I'm I'm fully awake that's that's one of the ways that I pray about and what I try to pray about are the things that are guided by the Lord's Prayer, you know, mm. Our Father, Our Father. I just, I say that out, and then I kind of let that guide my prayers. I also try to make sure that I pray for uh, people that I don't want to pray for. <laughs> you know, people in situations, I try to ask, uh, Lord, what, what does the Lord want me to do in terms of, like, forgiving people and uh, praying for people and, mm. and things where I'm struggling with it. So that's what I pray for. That's pretty dope, ah. dog. That's yeah. deep in the morning. Dip? Did you say that's that? That's deep, deep in the morning. Deep, I was thinking that you were going to introduce me to a new phrase. Yeah. All right, well, that's, that's our Ask the Pastor and Ask the Intern. We hope that that's helpful for you today. Hi, Forest Park. I am Elena Marr, and I am here today with my good friend, Lori Purim. If you don't know Lori, she, pre-COVID, uh, served faithfully at the front desk in our Forest Park office, and she also helps run our Covered in Love clothing pantry, she is a really big part of our Forest Park community, and I'm also so thankful to call her my friend as well. So welcome to the podcast, Lori. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Awesome. Well, I wondered if you could just start by telling us a little bit about yourself or anyone sure. who might not know you, maybe where you're from, how oh. you ended up here in West Michigan, and a little bit about your faith journey. Okay, I can certainly do that. I um, grew up in Springville, New York, which is near Buffalo, New York, way far away from New York City, because people say, oh, how's the city? And I said, I really don't know. I've been there only once. So anyways, then um, I went to college at Indiana University, and I was studying to be a physical education teacher, and I really wanted special ed. So I was fortunate enough to have experience during the four years, and my student teacher um, was in Indianapolis, and they had special ed children there, and God was already working in the plan of me getting to Michigan because my supervising teacher was in Muskegon to a reunion from high school with my one of the administrators I ended up having, and they... Um, he was saying, we don't have a special ed phys ed teacher, and she recommended me, which was a total surprise to me. So I get this call back in New York where I was working at a family camp, and they said, oh, well, there's this gentleman from Muskegon. I go, well, where's Muskegon, Michigan? I never heard of that. So they uh, invited me to come for an interview, so I drove here back in 1972, had the interview, got the job, drove back to New York, 
packed up my car and came here not knowing anyone, just walked in and started this teaching job. And um, it was wonderful. It was a special ed physical education with um, many disabilities of children. And I did that for 19 years. And it was the the best job you could have asked for. Then I went into teaching science, seventh and eighth grade at Steele Middle School. So I ended up retiring after 37 years. But in the meantime, my faith journey was um, moving along. I joined our church in 1976 when we were downtown. I was married there in 1980. And then I followed um, all along here to Forest Park Covenant. And I'm still here after all these years. It's my family. And uh, so that's kind of my background as to how Muskegon became my home. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Sounds like God directed each one of those steps for you. Yes, God has. Mm -hmm. I've been, um, since I was a small child, involved in church and activities and knew Jesus. And, you know, it. when I was younger, it didn't have the impact that it has for me in even the last 10 years um but god was always working just uh now i'm more aware of it yes for sure you are pretty plugged in here at forest park so Mm -hmm. do you want to tell us a little bit about what you do here at church and just the impact that forest park park has had on you okay the impact has been great because um my immediate family, I have one daughter who is still living, but I've lost um, two children, two brothers, and my mom and dad within seven years of each other. So that was my immediate family, and it was rough. But at Forest Park, um, I was invited to um, do uh, visitations out to older people, which I just love talking with them and sharing. I also do women's ministry I do send encouragement cards out and help plan activities that we have. I have been up till just the COVID working in the office one day a week and filling in whenever needed. I loved it. And the big thing is, yes, the Covered in Love Pantry, which I've been involved with for about 12 years. Um, Tracy Fritz, who organized the whole thing, asked me if I would take charge of it some years ago. Mm -hmm. And of course, Miss Organization here (laughs) just loves organizing things, but also knowing that it was a mission that we were able to reach foster care children and family in needs that we wouldn't have been able to. So um, church here is my home. The staff is my family. I'm very blessed once again to... uh, be here mm-hmm. so well we love having you here and oh, i'm so well, thankful thank you. for all your ministry well it's a god thing he's uh, he directs me so mm-hmm. yeah well i would just love to hear about your experience with covid over the past year just what that has been like for you okay how you've gotten through it and even how you have seen god at work through this challenging year all right well covid definitely came at a time when I was being scheduled for a couple surgeries, and I had one surgery. Well, what started that, I, God had me moving to a new place. I was in a house that you had to go up steps. Now I'm out at Rosie Mound in one of the cottages, and God led me there, and there were just signs again that I had no idea I was moving. And God said he put on my heart to go and visit, And there were just uh, signs there that said, um, yes, Lori, this is where I want you to be because you've got to face some things ahead here surgically and physically. This is um, so I moved in in May. I had surgery in June and, of course, the COVID at that point. So I was somewhat limited as to who was coming in, who wasn't. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of time for myself. And um, it went good the first month, but then I had to go in October for another surgery. And that, of course, 
put me laid up again. It's like, well, where's, you know, the world's out there. Where am I sitting here? Mm -hmm. But the best thing that happened was that I had time to really get into where is God in my life? I didn't question it. I just kept saying, Lord, I know you're making me better through these surgeries from arthritis that I can even be more productive in mission and my life from there. So I have my ups and downs, but I've been able to really turn back to God and just say, I'm trusting you. I do your will. I started a one-year Bible study program, and my eyes are open to things I never knew that were in the Bible that I can use. And in the COVID too, I've had this release of being able to share with other people my values, my beliefs, how God works in my life. And even though I couldn't go out just talking on the phone and writing encouragement cards, it's like, whoa, Lord, you're, you know, I can't get to the pantry, but I can still do things that are meaningful to me and I feel to God. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we all have some frustration with the COVID, but yet I don't let those things pull me down. Right. You know, we have so much to be thankful for, and we know God's in control, and it's all going to work out in the end when we end up in heaven. So, yeah. Yeah, I love hearing about how you found other ways to still keep serving, even with having surgeries mm-hmm. and being separated from people. God still gave you different ways to serve and to make an impact. Yes, yeah, it's um, it's been good. Yeah. I'm not at all, you know, like, oh, poor me, poor me. Um, mm-hmm. The surgeries have taken their toll, and I have two more coming up, one in March and one in October, and that pretty well takes care of the joints that need to be replaced. And then I have aspirations of doing some traveling. Um, I want to go to the Holy Land and um, just be there. I I have such a love for Jesus and just to know I was there, he was there. And um, I'm really excited. I think God is showing me the way to do that too. Yeah. So oh, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Well, we have started a message series all about the return, returning from times of exile and wilderness. Mm-hmm. And I know that you have a testimony of a lot of times of loss and pain in your life. So I just wondered if you would be willing to share with us um, just how you've returned from those times in your life and what you've learned through that. Sure. Um, I would say um, to start with, um, when I was married, my husband and I lost our baby at four months. I miscarried. Mm -hmm. And I became concerned, you know, we're getting older and why don't we go for adoption? Mm -hmm. So we um, went through Bethany, through Jenny Scudder, and um, through some trials with that, there were up and downs because at first God didn't open the door for my three children, Mm -hmm. Amy, Megan, and Chad. Another couple had them, but then that didn't work out for the couple. Then another couple wanted them, and Jenny would come say, I'm sorry, they're still, you know, and I'm going, oh my gosh, Lord, what children, you know, we want three. I'd like at least one boy because I grew up with brothers yeah. and not a sister. And I was a little <laughs> scared with girl. How do you do this girl thing? <laughs> but um, I got a call from Ginny one day and she said, Lori, those three, do you still want them? And I said, oh my gosh, yes, yes, please. And um, she said, the other families didn't work out. They're yours. Mm. And I go, Oh, my gosh. So um, within exactly six months, the children arrived with some friends that lived in Korea. And let me tell you, the day on when they arrived coming out of the airplane, and we waited and waited, and finally they came, and it was like I gave birth to these three little ones, a three-year-old, a four-year-old, and a six-year-old, and they were just so precious. And My older daughter took to my mom right away. You could see that bonding. And the other two were, Chad just grabbed on to me. He was a three-year-old. And Megan's kind of like, whoa, what's going on? (laughs) Well, so we had, um, that was in December. And then uh, my husband was back, my ex-husband was back working. 
driving bus, charter bus, and then in October, or right before Thanksgiving, I received a letter from him, I want a divorce. Mm -hmm. And I, it was out of the clear that it, you know, and I was devastated. Here we just adopted these children, we moved into a new home, we were actually buying one. And he says this, and so a uh, friend of mine said, Lori, why don't, if you need to get away to think this through, there was so much on my mind, and my mom and dad took care of my kids, and I went up north to a very secluded place, which I didn't know there wouldn't be TV or you couldn't get radio. It was very secluded in the woods, and I began to panic, and I actually thought, is it worth going on? You know, I, I had a very difficult time there. So um, I really thought, end your life. And I wasn't thinking of the kids at the time. I was just so devastated with this. And uh, I made a phone call back here. Pastor Johnson was our pastor. He said, Lori, I want you to come home. And I'm with you. We'll pray. It was dark at night. It was raining. And Satan was working very um, much in, at that time saying, go off the road. It's not worth it. Go off the road. And I kept, you know, and I said, no, you're not going to take my life. And it took about two and a half, three hours to get home. But I made it through, and I knew at that point God was right there with me and saying, Lori, you had three beautiful children. Mm -hmm. And so we went through growing up, and then in um, 2009, um, Amy and Chad, my oldest and youngest, had been dealing with cancer. Amy was in Atlanta, Georgia. Chad's in California, and Megan's in Florida. So um, that was a really tough time. I, I tried to divide teaching and being with them, and um, I didn't get to see Amy till almost the end of her time here. And um, they both were at Hartwood. And Amy came up with Megan from Florida, and um, she just was here five days before God took her home. Mm -hmm. And um, But once again, God was there. When Amy passed, it was very quiet, very still, and, and I just sensed her leaving and my mom waiting there to take her hand. She just loved my Amy so. And then... I went back across the hall after Amy passed. I told Chad, who had been to see her. And so then um, March, um, Chad was still not in the end of, but I was talking with the doctor, and I was saying, Chad always said to me, um, Mom, I just want to know you're okay. I just want to know you'll be okay. And I talked to Dr. Elguire, and we talked, and I said, Chad keeps asking that, and I told him, yeah, I'll be okay. Well, I went to bed. I stayed in his room, and they woke me up at 2.30 in the morning and said, Chad's gone. Mm -hmm. And I go, what do you mean? Did he leave the place again? Because he did once. No, he's gone. Well, that just was like, put me in total, um, like, I don't know. I, I just couldn't figure this out. And it wasn't like he was ready. So anyways, I, I went, after them passing, I went through a time of why God, I, I really did go in exile. And um, then at Christmas, I found my brother the day after Christmas. He had died in his apartment. I found him. So with those three losses so close and being my children, which I, I I couldn't even grieve. I went numb for almost six, seven years of not being able to share it. I didn't want to be around. I didn't come to church. I just was. Um, but then times changed, and um, I began to grieve, and I began to talk to God about it. And he brought me back, and he brought me back in a way that he has given me missions that relate to children that I can feel good about. Um, and that's why I think I've been so involved with the church. God knew. And um, I don't have that anger anymore. I'm thankful. I say to myself, you should be thankful. He chose you, these three children, to raise, and he knew they would die from cancer. But he wanted you to be there for them for the years. And um, I couldn't be more grateful. 
um, in that respect. I miss them. I'll never not miss them. But I try to do positive things, um, you know, to help me through that. Yeah. So. Yeah. You are such an inspiring person. I just, every time I hear your story, I'm just amazed at how you took this huge loss in your life and just turned it into wanting to help others and to pour back into other people. Yeah, it's it's a God thing. It just, I, I, I'm just, every day I wake up and I'm just amazed at, wow, God, what do you got planned for me today? And it's not always easy. I mean, there's, but I trust him. I do my study. I share with people. And I just feel God has given me um, things inside of me that just love reaching out to people, kids and older people. Um, you know, it's just where my heart is. Yeah. I, I like doing that. I love doing that. Mm -hmm. And I love growing in my spiritual life and coming back from that. It was an exile. It For definitely sure. was. So. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Lori, mm -hmm. and just sharing how God has been at work in your life through your whole life. It's just amazing to yes. hear how he continues to give you new guidance and directions. And right. It's amazing to hear. So thank you for being with us today, and thank you for sharing. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah.